isn't the spring garden magical? Right, ladies? <laughs> this is Caria. This is the easiest shrub in the world to grow. Shade lover, deer resistant, almost deer proof. Of course, we can't say that. We're getting lots of questions about daffodils that aren't blooming, and that's our job for today. Follow me. These daffodils here are Van Sion. Uh, they're one of my favorite daffodils, no blooms at all. I lifted and separated them probably 10 years ago, so I'm gonna do it again. This is the first daffodil I ever saw when I moved into my first house in 1983. And I've always been in love with it because of that. Actually goes back to 1620. And we have lots of other daffodils that are blooming good that I wanna show off. This is Bridal Crown. Oh man, it smells like gardenias. And then another double called Tahiti, which I put in last fall that are just going crazy. I just love them. So these, back in the day we used to put stakes in here. They would dry out in the fall. We'd dig them out and then move them at that time. But we found that we would cut them to pieces. While they're in the green, they're gonna resent being moved. But this is the time to do it because we can find the bulbs. And it's very simple. We're just gonna dig them up and these, Actually, I'm going to move some of them to a spot where I think they're going to be happier. Another reason, besides being tight and growing together, they don't bloom, is they don't have enough sun. And these being in the woods, I just don't think they have what they need. And I want to see blooms next year or the year after. So let's take them out of here. We're going to see what we can lift up here and keep the big ones and the little ball bets we might just toss into the compost. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> we want to keep the foliage. What are we going to do? <laughs> it's like a magic trick. <laughs> and this is what we're left with. And you can see there's a bunch of tiny bulbs in here that it's going to take a, a few years for them to get big enough to actually bloom. And so I've already dug my planting hole. Now, you don't know how big to dig it, so I just, I guessed, and it was pretty decent soil. And so what I'm going to do is take these over there, we're going to split them up, put the biggest bulbs in and see what we're left with. So I'm just separating, looking for the biggest bulbs. As I said, probably the real tiny ones I'll just put into the compost pile, usually looking for the mother bulbs. And hopefully next year I'll get blooms, but it might be two seasons and need to leave the foliage on because that's what feeds the bulb as that foliage turns yellow, it sends the energy into the bulb. And then all I'm gonna do is kind of put these into the soil, give them some distance, and we'll be done. And I got a little backfill I'll put on there. That's all there is to it. Let's see, there's a good one right there. This is the perfect example. That was the original bulb, and these two have grown off it. And they're all three big enough to plant and on their own they're gonna be happy to bloom. As I said, I'll have some backfill in here that will make these a little deeper. I've dug down about a, about a foot. Seems funny to be doing this in the spring. All right, I'm gonna finish up here with my backfill and I'll meet you back in the garden. I got more to show you, <laughs> or show off, I should say. <laughs> well, how about pink perfection tulips and my red boar kale is going to seed. I've been cutting these for friends and for neighbors. I've got some exciting news though. I'm gonna be writing a weekly column for the Green Voice. You can get it sent to your inbox for free. Just check this link right below me. Until the next time we see each other, boy, there's a lot to do, but there's also a lot to enjoy. We'll see you then. Thank you.